Stop. Pay attention. Let's play a little game. Carefully listen to this scenario. Your buddy has two light pink headdresses. They don't really want both of them, so they decide to trade you one for a big undertrade. So now you offer them, say, two black longs for one. And they say that's a great offer and are willing to accept and give you a chance to pick which one you want to trade for. But before you offer for one of the headdresses, what if I told you one of them was duplicated? Now remember that one of these will be removed from the game pretty soon. But then again, it's a massive undertrade. If you happen to pick the right headdress to trade for, you would make a profit of 20 black longs. But if you don't choose correctly, you end up losing two black longs. Make your choice, quick, deal or no deal. So, did you accept or decline? We know exactly which one you picked. How and which one? Stick around. We know most of you picked the risky option to trade for the headdress. And the reason for so is that there's a 50% chance you can make a massive profit, but a 50% chance you can lose a little bit compared to the profit. So this is exactly why most people picked the risky option. Risk is a very interesting subject. Risk is the potential of gaining or losing something of value. Values such as physical health, social status, emotional well-being, or financial wealth can be gained or lost when taking risks resulting from a given action or an action, foreseen or unforeseen. Risk can also be defined as the intentional interaction with uncertainty, a probability or threat of damage, injury, liability, loss, or any other negative occurrence that is caused by external or internal vulnerabilities, and that may be avoided through previously taken action. Now, risk is very hard to explain in words. We're sure you've probably taken lots of risks before. To put it in perspective, we showed you the opening game. To make it clear, we will show you what we mean. Now, imagine I would gift you 10 black longs if you were to play a game. The rules of the game being fairly simple. I play 10 games of four gym with you, and whoever ends up having the majority wins. But there's a catch. If you lose more than five games, you are entirely banned from playing Animal Jam. If you win more than five times, though, you get to keep the rares. But another big factor is under play here. It's your mind. I know what you're thinking. You are calculating the risk that it would be undertaken if you were to participate in the game. If you're decently smart, you would know that is half the chance of winning and half the chance of losing. But that's not the only thing your brain is taking into consideration when it is making these sorts of decisions. It depends on the person under the situation, which we will discuss later. The unfair methods that could be used to cheat you into believing the probability of winning is half. For example, for gem solvers, which is played first has a winning probability of 1 in 2 million, and much, much more. Here's something you probably didn't know. There's actually a unit to measure risk of death. This is called one micromorph, coined by Ronald A. Hauer, and has an amount risk equal to one in one million probability of dying. For example, traveling in a plane for 1,000 miles increases your micromorph by one, which is a two in a million chance of dying. Similar to 230 miles in a car, 
20 miles on a bicycle and every 6 miles on a motorbike. Now to represent this, imagine I flipped a coin and I got heads. I flip it again, I got heads. Did it again, and again, and again, 20 times and got heads, every single time. The probability would be half and a half and a half and a half 20 times, which is roughly one in a million. But in games like Animal Jam, there is practically no risk of death. Right? Wrong. For every three hour session of Animal Jam you play, you have a 1 in a 100 million chance of dying, which is 0.01 microwarps. Of course, this is a very small and rough number, but this shows how risk really is everywhere. Every small decision it may be, from picking either chocolate or vanilla ice cream, or picking which toothpaste you're gonna buy, here's something you probably didn't know. Back in the days of F-Man, The risk factor of getting the gift from someone used to be really high. You had 10 Micromorphs chance of getting the gem again from F-Man, which would ruin and hack your account. This chance of 100,000 may seem like a thin chance of getting hacked, but considering the amount of people that log into Animal Jam every day, this could easily be you. Now, a buddy tells you he might have sent you an extremely rare item from an account you don't know. Would you risk opening the gift now? Sounds like a 50-50 chance again. Take your time and decide. Well, no. The probability of a buddy who is not your best friend sending you an item is very low. Putting F-Man gifts right into your jags. To emphasize my point, I want you to play another game. Think of scammers. Now, a lot of people have gone into Mod Township and have seen someone scamming. But how exactly is it scamming? Well, the way you win prizes really don't stick to what would be called the giveaway. If a random jammer came up to you and asked you this, Hey, could I borrow your spike for a second? I need to take a picture. Would you do it? Now think of a very close buddy asking you the same exact question. Hey buddy, can I borrow your spike for a second? I really need to take a picture. Now this may seem abrupt, but comment down below if you would rather trust your buddy or a stranger. A lot of you may actually trust strangers in an actual real life situation, even if not in this one. So what steers our trust judgments? This study results show that people often trust total strangers more than they trust their friends. Why? Essentially because we know better. When people know the trustee, they base their decisions on their prior history with that person. When people don't know the trustee, there is no bank of information to draw from, so their judgments are a reflection of their personality traits. But of course, once you know this, it's much harder for people to do this. Always keep this in mind. Risk yields success and rewards, but always keep in mind the circumstances. And I can best tell you, if anything is too good to be true, it probably is. So that's going to be it for today's episode of Brain Games. Stay tuned for more, and make sure to subscribe to me, Pippity AJ. My channel link will be in the description below. Trust me, I'm going to check a proc. I'm going to check. Okay, that's it. Goodbye, people.